The Sunday supper, I think of it as an indoor picnic. Small plates, variety, you can have more of this, a little of that, and it's all room temperature. I love a room temperature dinner. People stay at the table longer, and they talk more, and they're more relaxed. I love that. My favorite dish to make when people are coming, it's, I think of it as my welcome dish, or gougere. They're small cheese puffs. It's the basic dough, which is water and milk, butter, and salt. I'm actually gonna measure the salt because I want it to be salty. So a teaspoon and a quarter. Well, I'm not gonna be exact about the quarter. And now, this is kind of dramatic. The flour, it goes in all at once and stir, 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 stir. The flour absorbs all the liquid and the butter. It's ready to be removed. Now is not the time to go write the great American novel. You want to work on this while it's hot. I used to make this with five eggs. And then recently, I started making it with four eggs and one white. The white adds more structure and makes it just a little crisper. So I call these my newest gougere because I add some mustard to the dough. And now the cheese. This is what takes it from cream puff to gruyere. And now the toasted walnuts. You can make gruyere, you can make them the size of a dinner plate. I like to make them tiny. This is a little scoop that's one and a half teaspoons. I like to make them small so that People can just pop them in their mouths with a glass of champagne and then come back for more. Here, these are ready to go into the freezer and because you can bake them right from the freezer, you're ready for company whenever the doorbell rings. So I'm going to make some of these for my guests who will be here very soon. I'm going to give them a little room. They puff, but because they're so tiny, they don't puff really big and they don't take up lots and lots of space. Nothing makes me happier than coming into the dining room and seeing people at the table talking to one another, passing plates, toasting one another. That, those, are, those are the happiest times for me. I'm going to make one of my favorite dishes with you. It's salmon rillette. And I have three recipes for it in Everyday Door. This version, which I really love, it's Franco-Asian. And so it has, well, you'll see what it has. Start by poaching the salmon. So water and white wine. I'm adding a little seasoned rice vinegar and a pinch of tokorashi, which is Japanese chili peppers and scallions. I forgot the pinch of salt. So that goes into the poaching liquid. In goes the salmon. Boom. So I'm just going to lower the heat and let this poach for about three minutes. Riet is a spread. So it's normally served on little pieces of baguette. It's one of these dishes that when you make it the first time, if you love it the way I love it, you will make it all the time. It's great for family and it's going to be terrific in tonight's supper. These are all the ingredients for the smoked salmon part of the riet. Softened butter. Butter is very French. The shallots are even more French. Chopped 
scallions and lemon zest. I'm never without lemon, it just adds so much flavor. Okay, one half done. I broke the salmon up and I chilled it for about 20 minutes. And now I'm going to do what I think of as the Asian part of the Franco-Asian recipe. It's a base of highly seasoned mayonnaise. Got a little bit of the seasoned rice vinegar. Got a little more togarashi. And some gochujang, which is a Korean chili paste. I'm using a skimpy teaspoon because I love the color of this. The fresh salmon goes in. Just mix this up and just mix the two salmons together. A little bit of chopped cilantro. We're good to go. Ready to be chilled and then on to ricotta spoon bowl. I call it a spoonable because, because I don't know what else to call it. It's ricotta seasoned with oil, lemon, and herbs. You can use it as a dip, you can spread it on bread, you can eat it off a spoon. It's a recipe I really like. Last night, I put the ricotta in a cheesecloth lined strainer just to get it a little drier so that it will take on the oil and the herbs. You can make this any way you want. You have my permission to do that. My favorite dishes and the ones that I'm happiest about after I've developed them are the ones that I know can be played with and varied and personalized. For instance, the oven charred tomato stuffed peppers. What I think is so great about that dish is it's a good idea the way I make it. And it'll be a good idea when you change it and you change it and you change it. So here's a technique that I love. When I'm roasting something, when I'm baking something, everything that will be cooked is seasoned, but I like to season the pan too. It means that whatever is placed in the pan will have good flavor on the bottom as well as the top. So some olive oil, some salt, pepper, some pieces of garlic, and then some fresh herbs and basil, which is so nice with peppers and tomatoes. I'm gonna to put this aside for a second and work on the surprise. So breadcrumbs and anchovies. Some lemon zest. A little bit of olive oil. And I'm adding Piment d'Espelette, which is the dried chili pepper from the Basque region of France. Now comes the arts and crafts part. I've left the stems on. You can take them off if you're using a pan that doesn't have enough room for you to use to do this, but um, I think they're kind of pretty. Divide the breadcrumbs among the pepper halves. I'm going to put a little lemon slice in each one and a little bit of basil. I want to just fit these in. Just get as many into a pepper as you can. Season the tomatoes. A good drizzle of oil. And then Whatever herbs you have left over, put them on top. So I'm going to make my sweet and smoky roasted carrots. They can be a side dish, but I love them as part of this Sunday supper because they can be a 
almost main course vegetarian. So I start with cider vinegar and I'm going to add um, smoked paprika. I'm using sweet smoked paprika. Some cumin, plenty of salt, olive oil, and honey. Whenever I'm using hot peppers and hot ingredients, I like to add a little bit of sweetness to the mix. So I'm roasting on a piece of parchment. You can roast directly on the sheet tray. You'll get a darker char on the carrots, and you'll also spend half an hour cleaning the sheet pan. So choice is yours. I like when I've got fresh carrots with nice greens. I like to keep just a little of the top and I also like to keep the tapper. I think it looks nicer. I'm going to drizzle some of this, not all of it, over the carrots. Because the carrots get served with yogurt. And it's really nice to have some of the syrup left to flavor the yogurt. Ready for the oven. I always want surprise. I always want variety. I always want color. I'm such a selfish cook. I cook what I like and then hope that everybody else will like it too. The carrots are out. I'm going to, as with all of this Sunday supper, serve these at room temperature. And I'm going to make the little dip for it. So it's Greek yogurt and the leftover syrup. My new book, my 13th, is called Everyday Dory, The Way I Cook. And it's really food that's simple, that is made for everyday, made for family gatherings. It can be dinner for two, it can be dinner for 10. Time to make dessert. This is the last of the bunch banana bunch cake, the tongue twister. So I'm going to whisk together the dry ingredients. I've got flour, of course, and I've got baking soda. And the only spice that's going into this cake is freshly ground nutmeg. I love the combination of nutmeg and banana. Room temperature butter, brown sugar, granulated sugar. I put the salt in with the butter and the sugar. I think it gets better incorporated that way. I love the sound that an egg makes when it cracks. I'm using vanilla extract, you could use a combination of pure vanilla extract, I always use pure vanilla extract, and a rum if you'd like. These are the mashed up bananas that were, when I first made it, the last of the bunch. So I'm gonna put in half of the flour. Just kind of pulse the mixture so that it doesn't go flying like mad. And when it's almost incorporated, add yogurt. I love this cake. It has the sweetness of the bananas and it has that tang that you get from yogurt. Yogurt also acts to tenderize the cake, so the crumb on is really nice. The rest of the flour. So now the batter is smooth and beautiful. I'm adding chopped chocolate and coconut. because coconut and bananas are made for one another. There. I'm a very practical cook, and I think that the recipes in Everyday Dory are practical. The ingredients come from the supermarket, they come from farmer's markets when I can get to them. It's everyday cooking. The last of the bunch banana bunt cake, it's fun to say it, um, is out. 
it's cool. This cake would be great just like this, little powdered sugar over it, but icing takes an everyday cake to a party and we're about to have a party. So this is a very simple, traditional confectioner sugar and milk icing. So because too much of a good thing is just barely enough, I'm going to put a little toasted coconut over it. So I'm going to let the icing set and I'm going to get ready for the party. I always think that food tastes better if it has a story. And a lot of the recipes in Everyday Dory come from stories, things that have happened to me. But I also have things at home that have stories. Those little pots that we used were made by my daughter-in-law, Lin Lin. I love saying daughter-in-law. It's new and I love it. <laughs>